Thank you, Vicky. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me okay? If I just talk like this? Okay, cool. Uh, so, thank you so much for coming. Um, this is Music Performance Recording as an Educational Power Tool. My name is Adam Lansky, and I'm an audio engineer and instructor. If you have any questions as we're going through this, hang on to them, because there will be times here and there when I'll stop and say, do you have questions? So write them down, try and remember them as best you can. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, okay, so um, people find reasons to do things. People find reasons not to do things. I say, let's do things. So uh, this is me and a little bit about myself. I was at Florida State University for a few years, and I, in all honesty, I didn't do so well. Um, the traditional university system was awesome to be a part of. I learned a great deal in and out of the classroom, but I didn't have a great GPA when I left. I wasn't finding what I was really passionate about. I knew it was related to music, I knew it was related to art, but I didn't know in what capacity. So down the road a little bit, I discovered the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences, and this is a school dedicated to audio recording and production. Um, so I was there and I graduated at the top of my class. Uh, they have small classes, so maybe it was, it was easier, I don't know. Anyways, my experience since then, I am the um, archival recording engineer for the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra for this season and last season. I have worked with the Hot Springs Music Festival for the past two seasons. The Art Porter Jazz Festival I recorded with this past season. We made a promotional video for them. If you haven't been to the Art Porter Music Education Foundation Week of Jazz in Little Rock, you should go. Even if you don't like jazz, you should go, because they serve wine. So, well, the jazz is really good too. Um, so beyond that, I've done theater, film, radio, television. I've given guest lectures at UCA. I was recently in Habarovsk, Russia, where I recorded the Far East Symphony Orchestra, and traveling with my recording equipment was a very unique challenge. Incidentally, coming back into the United States was the most difficult part, but we're not here to talk politics. Uh, so I've got many other credits beyond this, but uh, let's move on. So this is my business, Lansky Sound, replay the moment, making your sonic dreams a reality. So we are a mobile, audio recording and production uh, professional team, suite. I also do some recording in my project studio at home, but the majority of the recording that I do is in the field in places where the acoustics aren't so good, where there are living, breathing, coughing, sniffing, sneezing people in the audience, musicians who are on stage that are sort of nervous about everything that's going on, you know, now there's microphones and it's like, you know, uh, what, what is that thing? the microphone doesn't forget. Um, so anyways, LanskySound.com, etc., etc. But let me be blunt, okay? I'm not here to sell myself. I'm not here to get you to try and, uh, you know, try my services. Um, I don't want your money. I'm not gonna turn it down, but that's not what I'm here for, okay? I'm here uh, to hopefully get you to say yes to expanding uh, our educational infrastructure, to creating teamwork opportunities for students, to developing new lines of revenue for your department, and implementing affordable technology to tap into your students' hidden talent. So I'm hoping that you leave here saying yes. <laughs> Student demonstration time. Let's welcome up our students. Woo! Yes. And what is your name, Miss? I am Maddie Frappato. Welcome, Maddie. Stephen Morrison. And Stephen Morrison. And why are you here today, besides, obviously, this demonstration? Well, I got voluntold, so that's why I'm here. Okay, so Maddie has a musical instrument, and she has a piece of music with which she is not familiar. Stephen cannot wait to record her while she performs this new musical piece. So let's start this demonstration.
before you do anything over here, how do you think that went? Uh, not very well, but we'll make it better. Okay, we're gonna play it back for you. Do you have a writing utensil? Keenan here has some kind of writing device. Okay, so let's play it back and find specific spots that need to be worked on. Would you like to hear that again? Hear it again. Okay. So, so do you feel like it helped hearing that back? Because you had your memory of playing it, but did it help to actually hear it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Would you like to try one more time for us? Yes. Thank you so much for your bravery. Okay, so, Stephen, on a scale of one to ten, how difficult was that? A zero. A zero, ladies and gentlemen, and I haven't even paid him to say that. <laughs> okay. And, Maddie, what are your thoughts having played, recorded, played and recorded again? Well, um, it's instant feedback, which is what everyone in my generation wants. Um, I can hear how I got better, how I changed, and you could also hear how instead of one really long note, I actually played the different notes that time, so that was a lot better. Awesome. So you feel, do you feel like recording again helped you improve on those specific notes? Yes, and it also, I felt like I kept a steadier pace that time, so that, I don't know, it was overall better the second time after hearing it and learning what I needed to improve upon. Any closing remarks? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for helping us out here, guys, with this demonstration. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. So this program... Check. Check. Sorry. So this program that you're looking at on the screen is called Audacity. This program is free. You can download this for free, and after the session is over, I can put my jump drive in there and I can save these audio files to my jump drive and then I can take them home, I can listen to them again, I can email them to people. If I like them, I can post them online and I can share these with the world. So this is the technology that we are talking about today. So are there any questions based on what you just saw? Yes. 
the reason I chose Audacity instead of GarageBand for this particular exercise is just because of its simplicity. Um, the interface is as easy as it possibly gets. Every time you press record, it automatically creates a new track, and you can go through and audition each of those tracks individually, whereas with GarageBand, you have to create a new track each time. Um, GarageBand essentially is a stripped down version of Logic Pro. Logic Pro is the program that I use for my audio production. Uh, there are many programs to choose from. Pro Tools is probably a name that you've heard before. Um, the reason many people start on uh, GarageBand, A, is because it comes with a computer. B, you know, uh, for the most part, it's pretty simple to use once you understand it. Um, and there are software instruments you can play with. There's a lot of good stuff to it. But I picked Audacity just because you download it from the internet for free, and what you see is what you get, basically. You don't, ne you don't even really have to learn very much. It's just a recorder program as, you know. Does that answer your question? Sir. Do you, do you know if, I, I have one on my computer, and I think Audacity is the one. It came with the Crosley turntable. OK. Uh, the gentleman says that he thinks he has Audacity on his computer, and it may have come with a Crosley turntable. You're saying, is the turntable like a record to, to MP3 kind of thing? Okay. Yeah, that very well could be the case. Because basically, to be technical, what that record player is doing is acting as an interface, what's called an audio interface. So you can see up here, I've got the, the computer and then this this metal box right here. This is your analog to digital converter. And I know that sounds big and scary, but all it means is you plug in microphones or a record player, and this turns the signal into computer language that the computer can then record, also known as binary code. So you may very well have Audacity on your computer, because that would be a very simple way to go. So that would be like in the context of the, the, or the guts of the, the player. You are correct, sir. Your record player to USB would have this kind of technology inside. That's absolutely correct. Miss, you had a question. Does it work on PC or Mac? Both. Absolutely both. Um, Audacity is, as far as I know, at least 10 years old. And uh, they have somehow managed to keep it running on just about any computer you want it to. And they don't charge you a single thing. Pretty cool. Any other questions? Yes. So mic, what kind of mic would she use right here? That she used right here? Okay. Um, she asked, what kind of microphone is this? So this is called a DBX RTAM, which is a real-time analyzer microphone. I'm going to pull it out of the shock mount here. Every, okay, so you asked a question, can this microphone be plugged in straight to the computer? Does it have to run through this box? Um, what you're asking essentially is a electricity question. Uh, this microphone puts out analog electricity. The computer is looking for digital, basically. Sort of like how my watch has the hands on it, this is analog and a digital watch, your cell phone is digital. So in order for the computer to be able to record the information coming out of the microphone, it has to be converted to digital. And that's what this box, the purpose this box serves, this interface. So if you have a built-in microphone in your computer, is that sufficient for it? If you have a built-in, I'm repeating your questions because I don't know if everyone's hearing them and also I'm recording this. She asked, if you have a built-in microphone, is that fine? It depends on what your goals are. Um, I encourage students and uh, musical instructors and anybody who's interested in being a performer or musician composer to handling microphones, to getting used to touching them and learning the basics about them. Um, if you just wanna make a scratch pad like, hey, I have this idea, or hey, I'm at home practicing and I just want to hear myself practicing, sure, certainly. If you're interested in creating a recording of a degree of quality, 
that other people will hear and say, oh, this is nice to listen to, then that's when you need to step up to different technology. So to get back to your original question, you asked what kind of microphone is this? I'm gonna say a bunch of technical stuff and kind of fast because we're running out of time. This is a DBX RTA microphone. They cost about $100, sometimes less. If you pay more than $100, try looking for somewhere that it's a little under that. And this is an omnidirectional condenser microphone. So uh, this microphone isn't even necessarily marketed for recording. It's marketed to help people set up their PA systems. But I find that for $100, it sounds fine and you can use it on just about anything. And as long as you just put it near what you're recording, it sounds pretty good. So I have, I own four of these. And even though I, I have microphones that cost uh, over $1,000, sometimes I will still use these depending on what I'm trying to do. So uh, also on that note, 100 bucks is probably about the least I recommend spending on a microphone if you want any degree of quality. Any other questions? Ma'am. A jillion. We're going to get to that. <laughs> she asked how much is it. Um, we're going to get to that in just a little bit. I'm so happy you asked, though. Any other questions? Sir? Can I still just take X XLR tape? Yes. Um, different interfaces will have different kind of input jacks. I would always recommend getting one that has uh, an XLR cable or a microphone cable. It's more commonly called, but XLR cable is industry term. He asked, does this take XLR cable? Anyone else? I'm so happy you guys are asking questions. This is awesome. Okay, moving on. So what is an educational power tool? You can Google this phrase and you're not gonna find it because I invented it. So I invented this term because I don't know how else to describe what you witnessed here with our two student demonstrators. So, in my opinion, an educational power tool is any idea, device, procedure, technique, or thing that is not only taught or learned, but also facilitates learning, improves related skills, and creates a resource feedback channel. If we were talking about Colin Powell, he would call this a force multiplier. So, uh, the reason is a Let's go backwards. It is a resource feedback channel uh, because you can use this to generate revenue, to garner interest, to get support from the community. It's going to improve related skills. You can see how um, Stephen had to learn the basic skills of operating Audacity. And Maddie also improved her performance skills and she's improving her listening skills. Um, and so it does a lot of great stuff. So, music performance recording is an educational power tool. So, why should music students learn to record themselves? Why should, why should music students learn to record, aka track themselves? So, this is my opinion. There are some facts here, some of this is my opinion. So, my opinion is producing recordings of rehearsals and performances provides familiarization with the recording process and demanding performance situations. Not only is Maddie up here recording a new piece that she's never heard before, but she's doing it in front of you guys. This is a demanding moment, okay? Most musicians hate recording and get nervous in front of microphones. I have dealt with a lot of super high class musicians and they're fine, they're rehearsing, everything's great, and then Okay, now go. And it's like a whole different ball game. And this is something that I personally don't understand. I've been recording myself for over 11 years. Um, to me, this is uh, nothing to be afraid of. To me, this is an opportunity, actually. But I'm comfortable with it. And as performing musicians, as potential studio musicians, which you can earn an excellent living at, you need to get used to this thing being here. It's, this is a part of music in the 21st century. Um, it provides immediate feedback on performance quality, what went right and what went not as right. It creates an opportunity to positively critique specifics about performance. Have you ever dealt with students and you tell them, hey, you're a little sharp here, you're a little flat here, and sometimes the idea doesn't quite sink in? 
Imagine if they could hear just how sharp or how off time. Um, beyond this, it creates portfolio work to promote individuals, groups, and institutions. This is a valuable, they're valuable outreach products for prospective students, musicians, donors, etc. The Creating a, an album, whether you record it yourself semi-professionally or hire a professional to do it, is a, an extremely valuable tool for your institution, for your performers. We're going to get into this later. It creates funding opportunities via sales. So having equipment in the classroom, I project, will provide a fun, easy, and rewarding study tool. It's going to improve abilities, and you're going to be able to track progress. You can quantify specifically over the course of a semester how someone has improved because you have the recordings. You have archives of their recordings and you can compare them. Uh, you create team opportunity for students to work together. You expand on existing coursework in a refreshing way. Empower students to explore the world of audio engineering, which I love doing every day of my life. And it's extremely powerful also to be a performing musician that has the skills of recording because a lot of musicians, A, spend a lot of money recording when they can do it themselves, and B, they can work with a lot of other people doing this. Um, it also, and potentially most importantly, it gives students something positive to share on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Imagine instead of, oh my God, did you see Becky's hair? Oh, well, you're not gonna believe what Susie said to me today. Imagine if it was like, hey guys, check out what we did today, and they listen and they hear you know, the, uh, a moment of musical brilliance, right? And they share this with the world. And this is what's going on at your school. So uh, recordings are truth and can be revisited at any time. What a performer believes he or she is playing may be very different from what the audience actually hears. And I know this is something that a lot of performers and directors and conductors struggle with because the musicians think they're correct, but without actually hearing it later after the fact, it's almost impossible to know, well, how incorrect or how correct. So the best actors videotape their rehearsals for review. The best painters have the actual paintings or photographs, etc., etc. Recordings are how musicians review and improve and promote themselves. We deal with a very temporal medium, and this is something that I love so much about music. Well, it's, it's air guys, it's air molecules smashing into each other. And then when the air molecules settle down again, it's, it's over. And how do you convey that to somebody? You really can't unless you record it. So let's say you do get some stuff for your classroom. And let's say, well, you know, we want to do something big. And we want it to sound really good. Maybe this is above my head. Maybe it is time to hire a professional. So. So we recorded Sing Me to Heaven, and this was recorded live in front of an audience uh, with a small overdub session afterwards just to clean up a couple spots that Dr. Gerber wasn't happy with. So what comes out of this? What comes out of this recording? Well, first of all, students are talking about it. Alumni are talking about it. The community is talking about it. We have an album coming out. How many other people are doing this, okay? So then they have this concert where they release it. The Wachita singers will also release their newest CD, Sing Me to Heaven. Since several of the students who helped record the CD have graduated, the concert will debut many new members of the Wachita singers and help them officially come together as one choral unit. Moving on, here's what um, Dr. Gerber also had to say about it. This recording is unique because it features music that Wachita singers have performed over the past three years. When you have a new set of singers, you want to preserve their time in the group, and a recording is a great way to do that. But more importantly, here's what one student had to say. Singing together in Wachita singers has always been a very touching and emotional experience with a lot of hard work involved. Listening to the songs we recorded makes me realize how well our hard work has paid off. Um, I tried to imagine what is it like being the musician on stage and I see how hard everybody practices and all this work and it goes on over the course of days, weeks, months, sometimes years and then there's this moment and again the air molecules have stopped smashing into each other and the moment is gone and this is something that I think uh, younger folks have a hard time understanding 
Um, and it's something that can leave people feeling, I think, a little empty because all of this work and how do I know? How do I know what happened? Was it good? How good? How bad? Whatever. So there's this inherent value of revisiting this moment again and again and again and as many times as you want. And you can share this with everybody. So Wachita Baptist University uh, uses this album to promote the department. Anytime they're looking to recruit new students, they send this disc out with their posters, with their flyers. Alumni buy this disc. Parents buy this disc. And what happens is the disc goes out into the community and new resources come back into the university. So last year, uh, the Southeast Festival Chorus, the Southeast Arkansas Festival Chorus, directed by uh, Haley Greer won our door prize. We were giving away a free three-hour recording session, which we are giving away again this year. Uh, so we'll drive anywhere in Arkansas and record you guys for three hours, whatever you're doing. And she has been selling these CDs, and she's putting this money towards another recording next year because she's seeing how this has turned into, you know, building momentum for them. Uh, the Arkansas Symphony Youth Orchestra. This is a DVD that we did with them. This is excerpts from Swan Lake that they performed with the Ballet Arkansas Youth Division. So not only do, does the uh, youth ensembles have me record them, but they also have me put them on a SoundCloud page. And you can share these songs and this page on Facebook and on Twitter and on email and any social media you can think. You just copy that link in there and you can pass it out to anybody in the world. So uh, Uncle Bob couldn't make it to the recital, but that's okay because we live in the 21st century. So um, when I work with a client, one thing that I do is I use this company called Disc Makers, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I create a three-dimensional uh, preview of what it's going to look like. So I pass this over to uh, the conductor or whoever's in charge of such things with the band, and they review it, they revise it, and this is all stuff that you can do yourself too. This isn't difficult. They have an easy online creator. I mean, you've got to find the artwork and put it on there and so forth, but anyways, this is what you end up with. But hold your horses. Doesn't this stuff cost money? Let's freak out. Oh, money. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. We need, oh, there's four speakers. Look at those chairs. Oh, let's freak out. Oh, it's so expensive. Oh, my God. Oh, lava lamps. <laughs> so, simmer down. <laughs> let's talk about $425. You asked how much does this cost. I suggest saving up $425. And you can have this going on in your classroom. And you can have these results. You're gonna familiarize them with the equipment, with it being in front of them, with working together, uh, getting that positive feedback right away, tracking progress, etc. Are we seeing obstacles or are we seeing opportunities? A creative instructor armed with a group of motivated students can actually generate income using their in-classroom recording system. How much does this stuff cost? So, so um, if you want to just open the door for $100, you can get a portable field recorder. And that's actually what I have in front of this speaker right here. And I'm using this because I, I want to make sure that I get a good recording of my voice. Hold your question for just a moment, sir. It's, a, it's okay. So this has microphones built into it. I take this thing anytime I travel because I record just different things going on in the world, the ocean, traffic, people talking in foreign languages. Um, you can plug this into the computer, and this is your microphone and your interface in one. So this is the box and the microphone built together, and it acts exactly like a USB jump drive. So if you know how to use one of these things, you can run one of those things, and you can be recording off that. Uh, that's a great place to start. If you're interested in potentially recording some things with a nicer sound to it, and you'd like the flexibility of microphones, you want your students to get hands-on, maybe you want to develop a responsibility, hey, who's in charge of the microphone this week? 
Make sure it gets back to its right place. You're teaching accountability. You're teaching respect for a new piece of equipment. So for $425, you get everything you see in the picture. And this is a classroom recording package. And uh, this isn't something I've made up. Uh, you can go to musiciansfriend.com. You can go to Guitar Center. And you can find these things. So the only thing I'll tell you about this package is I've added two things, which is the second microphone on the right and that little stereo bar above it, that little black looking piece of metal. And you can use this to record an ensemble. You can use this to record a piano. And I'm not talking about just like, oh, well, okay, here's some reasonable facsimile of a piano. It's like, it will sound like a decent piano recording. So if you're looking to print CDs, 100 discs, professionally done like what Wachita did, start at about $300. The more you order, the bigger discount you get. If you want to hire someone professionally, you can start to expect to spend $600 or more. But it all depends on what your objectives are. So <laughs> there's a lot of technical stuff at first, OK? But turn that frown upside down. So if you want to do something like this, you have a student, and you want to have him or her practice and maybe get under the microscope a little bit. Maybe they're having problems understanding, OK, I need to be doing x or y or z at measure a, b, or c. This is a great tool to do it. You assign another student to help them. And all you need to do is put that one microphone up just like this. You can set the interface to a level that is appropriate for most recordings. The better your students get at recording, the better your recordings will be. It takes time to learn how to calibrate. It's a single knob. If you can control the volume knob on your television, you can control the volume knob on this device. I promise you, it's the same principle. Um, if you have a small group that you would like to record, this is all it takes. Two microphones spaced three, five feet apart, depending on how wide. And you run two cables to your interface. You set both volumes at the same level, and you start recording exactly like Steven did. Um, and then you're creating your educational power tools. You don't necessarily even need to have super gleaned recordings to start bringing in money. Just the fact that your students have recorded themselves, in my eyes, is uh, an accomplishment. And I think that the community, the teachers, the students, etc., the parents, are going to want to feed back into that one way or another, be it financially or just be it with support of any other kind. Any questions at this moment? Pardon, sir? Yes, this is a Zoom H2. Correct. And uh, just like you see right here, I mean, you could be conducting your school band or orchestra, and you can press record, you know, and you hoist it up right behind your head and conduct the orchestra. And then you will have a recording of that. There were a couple other hands in the air. I'm sorry, miss. Okay, so Okay, so you're asking, would it be better to use a portable field recorder or to run the sound out of the PA system mixer and then into a recording device of some kind? It totally depends. If you're using, it depends on what microphones you have hanging that are already hooked up to your existing system. Um, my opinion is that for... The, the first rule I can tell you about the audio production world, which is probably similar to many other worlds where you're buying stuff, is you get what you pay for. If you spend $100 on a device, you will have what sounds like a $100 recording. But I will take the $100 recorder and the well-rehearsed, disciplined, excellent music group over $10,000 in equipment and the group that's just like, eh, you know? So that plays into it too. It depends, to get more directly to your question, it depends on what microphones are hanging, where they're located, and how it's being run through the system. I mean, it comes down to, are the wires that are being used still good quality? How long have they been up there? 
are the components uh, functioning 100%? It's in a gym. It's in a gym. So they are, they're on microphone stands, some are on boom mics. Okay. <laughs> How many microphones are there? I typically have three on stage and two on my, on my riser. On side. Okay. Using five microphones, run into a mixer, and then run into the recorder, assuming that those are decent microphones that are calibrated properly, I would potentially go with those um, because you're going to get better coverage. In a way, microphones act like flashlights. So if you can imagine a flashlight sort of has a beam that comes out of it and, and it radiates a little bit, it disperses a little bit, but essentially there's a point of focus. Okay, Some microphones have a point of focus that's 360 degrees and grows weaker like a light bulb as it gets away. Some of them are more like uh, a higher powered flashlight that will have a narrower beam of pickup. So this is where we're crossing over into technical stuff. Um, I don't know what your mics are. They're condensers? Okay. Okay. So she said that she's got SM58s on the stage, three SM58s, and then you've got two condensers on the side. Uh, a good rule of thumb that you want to write down is for uh, band, orchestra, choir, any kind of musical recording that is either unamplified or not experimental, you will want condenser microphones, especially with a choir. Dynamic microphones don't, incidentally, despite their name, don't have the dynamic range or frequency uh, width that you're going to get from most condenser microphones. That's why I love this microphone for 100 bucks. This captures frequencies from about like 10 hertz up to about 30 kilohertz, which is incredible for its price. It doesn't necessarily have the most beautiful sound, but you can hear what's going on, and it's an excellent indicator of, of what is happening, basically. Uh, so I would not recommend the SM58s if you were able to... They're not for the musical, they're for the speaking parts. Okay, so you're essentially doing this. Give it a whirl. Try both. Yeah. Uh, have the students come in and see what you think sounds best. Yeah, play around with it. Play around with different positions. Another good rule of thumb is if you are standing somewhere and it sounds good where you are standing, put the microphone there. Uh, another consideration also, especially in an area like a gym, is you start dealing with what's called critical distance, which is, as I'm speaking, there's the direct sound from the speaker, and then there's the sound of the room. There's the reverb of the room. The critical distance is where the direct sound and the reverb are equal in volume. You, you want those microphones closer than that critical distance point. Any other questions? Okay, so moving forward, uh, I try to be blunt. I hope it worked out. And think about it. If you have any questions, talk about it. And get together with your peers. And, uh, you know, this was a presentation on educational power tools, <laughs> music, performance, recording. Thank you so much. If you have uh, any detailed questions or you know, just want to pick my brain about stuff. That's my name. My website's LanskySound.com. You can email me, info at LanskySound. You can call me. There's my number. Uh, you can find Lansky Sound on Facebook, on SoundCloud, and in real life. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you so much, guys. Let's thank Adam one more time. Yeah.